Hey everyone, PJ here, and today's video is the third installment of the Disturbing Things You Shouldn't Google saga, meaning this is now officially a trilogy. But enough about you, let's get into some seriously fucked up shit that is definitely going to get this video demonetized. But before we do that, I need to address something. In the previous installment, my dumbass included a video that doesn't fucking exist. All because I didn't have the balls to search for Baby Burger. So, to make up for that, I'm going to include three bonus entries to this list. So without further ado, here are 12 disturbing things you shouldn't Google. The Judas Cradle, also known as the Judas Chair, was a torture device that originated in Spain during the 16th century that was used by the Spanish Inquisition. Victims would be suspended onto the cradle with weights tied around their ankles, causing the cradle to slowly tear the victim in half. This process would often take days or even weeks. To make matters worse, the Judas Cradle was also rarely ever cleaned, meaning if you didn't die from the cradle itself, you would likely die from an infection. Unit 731 was a covert biological warfare research and development unit within the Imperial Japanese Army that engaged in lethal human experimentation in order to create bioweapons during the Second Sino-Japanese War and World War II. It's not known exactly how many people were killed, but it is estimated that between 1936 and 1945 that over 300,000 people died from infection while 14,000 people were murdered. According to Wikipedia, Unit 731 was responsible for some extremely horrific war crimes such as biological weapons testing, hyperbaric pressure testing, vivisection, organ harvesting, amputation, and general weapon testing. Victims of Unit 731 consisted of men, women, including pregnant women children, and even babies born from the systemic rape that took place within the confines. The victims were all held against their will and subjected to excruciating torture and meant to dehumanize them as much as possible. There's a lot more to this than what I just said, but this section is getting way too long. All I'm going to say is this event is better left in the history books. Jonah Hernandez was a Las Cruces police officer who on February 11, 2024, was tragically stabbed to death on the line of duty. His murder was caught on his body cam. The video starts with Officer Hernandez pulling up to investigate an unnamed man who was wanted for trespassing. Officer Hernandez begins approaching Keemstar's long-lost twin brother when out of nowhere the suspect pulls out a kitchen knife and begins stabbing Hernandez in the neck. Blood covers the body cam and you can hear a sickening gurgling noise as the officer struggles to breathe. You can also hear gunshots go off in the distance as the suspect is gunned down by a random bystander. I was unable to find any information about the identity of the man who shot and killed the suspect. There is no other word I can use to describe this incident other than tragic. My heart goes out to the family as well as all others who were affected. May Jonah Hernandez rest in peace. Okay, since the majority of things on this list are going to be dark and morbid, I thought I'd include something funny to lighten the mood a little bit. Snape wives, also called Snapists, are female fans of Harry Potter who romanticize the character Severus Snape. Some of them even treat it like a religion. These women claim to be able to astral project into the Harry Potter universe so they can live out their fantasies of being in an intimate relationship with Snape. Googling Snape wives will lead you down a rabbit hole of delusion. That's really all I have to say about this. If you suffer from aerophobia, this is definitely going to make it worse. PlaneCrashInfo.com is a website that, as the name implies, features information about different plane crashes, their most recent being Singapore Airlines Flight SQ321. The website features famous deaths, accident maps, etc., and it even has a section that allows you to listen to the last words of pilots right before they went down. The whole thing is really disturbing and not for the faint of heart. I feel like it's important to say that airplanes are a lot safer than a lot of people think. In fact, you're more likely to die in a car crash than you are in a plane crash. However, nothing is 100% safe, and accidents can happen at any time. If you decide to Google Prince Albert, you might want to add tobacco to your search, because if you don't, you'll find a very disturbing type of piercing. It's basically this, but on purpose. Yeah, that's right. A Prince Albert is a dick piercing. Some dudes will actually pay to have their dicks pierced. Why anyone in the right mind would want to do this is beyond me, but to each their own, I guess.
Have you ever wondered what the face of a caterpillar looks like? Oh, you haven't? Well, too bad. Yeah, caterpillars look absolutely nothing like they do in cartoons. No, what they actually look like is much, much more horrifying. They legit look like something out of a nightmare. If you thought maggots under a microscope looked bad, you haven't seen anything until you've seen a caterpillar. This entry legit makes my skin crawl, so I'm gonna move on. If you've seen part 2 of this series, then you're definitely familiar with the piece of shit known as Luca Magnata, the man behind One Lunatic, One Ice Pick. Well now we're going to talk about his other video titled One Boy, Two Kittens, which was posted on YouTube and Facebook back in 2010. The video shows Luca Magnata playing with two kittens before putting them in a vacuum seal bag and sucking out all the air, causing the two kittens to suffocate to death. After the video went viral, it prompted Netflix to create a three-part documentary series called Don't Fuck With Cats. Luca Magnata is currently serving a life sentence. Justin Moan is a man who on January 30th, 2024, murdered his father and put his decapitated head in a plastic bag. Justin then uploaded a video to YouTube where he held his father's severed head up to the camera before calling on his fellow patriots across the United States to kill all federal employees. Justin's father was a part of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Justin's rant was long and nonsensical, not to mention extremely boring, but it showed just how much he hated the federal government. After he murdered his father, Justin went to the National Guard Training Center in Fort Indiantown Gap, where he climbed a barbed wire fence and entered the military establishment, where he intended to take even more lives by mobilizing the National Guard to raise arms against the federal government. He was then taken into custody and is currently awaiting trial. The video of Justin Moan holding his father's severed head is currently floating around the internet. This is the origin of the phrase, drinking the Kool-Aid. According to Wikipedia, Jonestown, also known as the People's Temple Agricultural Project, was an establishment built by the American cult The People's Temple and its leader, Jim Jones. On November 18, 1978, all 918 members died in the settlement in one of the biggest mass suicides in history. The mass suicide was carried out with all the members ingesting Kool-Aid that was laced with cyanide. Some people were injected with poison against their will, many of which were children. Guards, armed with crossbows, stood outside the establishment and were instructed to kill anyone caught trying to escape. The Russian lathe incident is security cam footage of the Russian man sticking his hand to a lathe machine not knowing that it was turned on. The man's hand gets sucked into the machine as he tries to escape its grasp. The machine then spins him around and tears him limb from limb as bloody mist and body parts fly everywhere. Another worker runs in to turn off the machine but by then it's already too late. The man is now in pieces. It legit looked like something from Happy Tree Friends. Footage of this incident can be found on Reddit, so if you're going to look it up for yourself, proceed with caution. If you look up Body Farm, you will find multiple pictures of corpses in various stages of decomposition. The idea was sought up by a forensic anthropologist named William M. Bass. The purpose of Body Farms is to study the process of decomposition from time of death to time of decay in order to get a better understanding of the decomposition process. While body farms, in my opinion, are not as bad as a lot of other things I've included on this list, the sight of a decomposing corpse is not for the faint of heart. So again, proceed with caution. And that was part 3 of the Disturbing Things You Shouldn't Google saga. Let me know what you think in the comments, and if you want me to make a part 4. And if so, feel free to send me some suggestions on what I should put. But for now, my name is PJ, and I'm gonna go get ice cream. You ain't never gonna slow me down, cause I feel alive now.